What's up everyone? Welcome to part three of our Movidius Deep Learning Raspberry Pi tutorial series. And in this one, we're gonna look at how to set up the operating system on the Raspberry Pi, how to install the SDK, and how to get some of the basic examples running. So what you see here is the Raspberry Pi desktop, and I've got the NCS plugged in, I've got my webcam plugged into the Raspberry Pi, and we're running a YOLO model. So you can see we're detecting a couple objects, dining table and a bottle. Got my Raspberry Pi right here with the NCS plugged in. It's a little warm, but not too bad. And yeah, it's working. The frame rate's not amazing. I think we're getting around two frames per second, but this is just gonna be our starting point. Again, we're just gonna look at how to get everything set up and working, and then we'll look at better models in the future. But with that being said, let's get started. So before we dive into it, I just want to say sorry for this video taking longer than it should to get out. I was really trying to get the fidget spinner model compiled and running on the compute stick, but it's just not working. I think it has something to do with the Darkflow repo, and you got to really set up these TensorFlow models correctly if you want them to compile. So I just haven't been able to get it to work. I'll still try. I'm trying some other ways of getting custom models built, and when I get that working, I'll do a video on that but for now I'm just gonna push on and do this setup video so we can get everything set up on the Raspberry Pi. To begin let's talk about the hardware we're gonna need. So of course we'll need a Movidius Neural Compute Stick, a Raspberry Pi, and the one I'm using is the new one, the Model 3 B+. And because we're using Raspberry Pi we'll need a micro SD card to install the operating system to. And since this install process of NCSDK it does take a long time Having a faster write speed micro SD card will really speed that process up. So if you can, I would recommend spend the extra money, get the higher write speed ones. Like for example, I've got this Samsung Evo Plus. They have um, cheaper ones like this Evo Select. So this one is smaller and the write speed is slower, but it's about half the price. But honestly, the red one is about 20 bucks. The green one is about 10, 11 bucks. If you can splurge, get the better write speed ones. It'll save you time on the install. So with that being said, let's look at how we're gonna install the operating system. So the operating system we'll be using is Raspbian, and this is a Debian-based Linux distribution. And what's nice about that is Ubuntu is also based on Debian, so it's gonna look and feel a lot like Ubuntu. So what we need to do to install is the one we're gonna use is the desktop version. So just go ahead, download the zip file or download the torrent file and save it. And then we're gonna need something to write the OS image onto a micro SD card. So the recommended one is Etcher. Just download this and it's pretty straightforward. Once our, our image is downloaded, we select it, we select the SD card we wanna write it to and we hit flash. So I'm gonna kind of skip through this part. There's tons of tutorials online where you can refer to, and it's pretty straightforward to do this. So we'll pick back up on the Raspberry Pi desktop. So here we are on the Raspberry Pi desktop. I've just booted it with a new image, and all I've done is changed my password and enabled a few settings like SSH and VNC. So I'm actually using VNC Viewer to display the desktop on my main PC just because I can't screen record off a of Pi. I don't think it's powerful enough to do that. But anyways, like I said, this is a fresh install. So the first thing we wanna do generally is pull up a command window and we're gonna do sudo apt update. All right, sudo apt upgrade, click yes, and while that's running, I'll just quickly show you how you change settings. So if you come to preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration, there's a lot of settings in here that you can mess with. So screen resolution, if you want to enable different ports on it, like the camera, SSH, VNC, you just click here to enable. And also, if you're first time starting up, you'll need to set your location, time zone, keyboard, Wi-Fi country in order to get the Wi-Fi working. So once you do all that, you just do a reboot 
and then you you pick back up so that's all i've done up until this point so we'll just wait for this upgrade to finish then we'll get started with that ncsdk install all right the upgrade's done so that can take a while i think that was like almost 10 minutes but anyways now that that's done we're gonna need to get git so let's jump over here sudo app install git i can't remember if this already comes with it so yeah i guess it's already in there so now the next thing to do is to clone the ncsdk repo do make install and make examples so now i'm just going to jump over to the ncsdk github site and we're going to look at the install instructions so what's nice about ncsdk is the install instructions are the same whether you're on ubuntu or raspbian we follow the exact same thing so we're going to clone the version one of the SDK. So I'll just copy, jump back over to my viewer, run the git clone command. All right, that's done. So now all we need to do is CD into the folder and we're gonna call make install. So fair warning, this is gonna take a really long time. Last time I did it, I think it was maybe two hours, three hours for make install, and then another three or four hours for make examples. So this is why I recommend buying a better SD card because the write speed should be faster, so this process should go faster. I've only tested with these cards, but I believe it should be, these should be performing better than those lower speed cards. So I'm gonna run this, it's gonna take a while, we'll pick back up when it's done. All right, make install is complete. I think that took maybe one hour, maybe a little less than one hour. So now that that's done, I'm going to plug the NCS into the Raspberry Pi. So because this thing is so bulky, you probably wanna put it on a top USB port and then you can put stuff on the bottom. I don't know if you can fit something right next to it just cause the stick is so bulky. But anyways, now what we're going to do is make examples. So again, this one's going to take a while. I'm just going to let it run and pick back up when it's done. I think it's going to take at least two hours, so be right back. All right, it's done. So that took about four hours to build the uh, examples, so be prepared to wait. But now that it's done, if we want to check it, what I've done is... I've just moved into the NCSDK examples, TensorFlow, Inception v3, and then what we can do is just call Python3, and then we're just gonna run the run.py file. So if you run this with your NCS plugged in, you should get this. It's gonna, the default image is a guitar, and it predicts that it's a guitar, and the other options are like acoustic guitar and then some other things. But because we are able to run this, this means that the install is successful. So now let's install a version of YOLO just so we can see what kind of performance we're getting with the Pi. So to demonstrate YOLO, I'm gonna be using this GitHub repo you see here. This one's actually different from the one I showed in the previous video. And that's because the one in the previous video just isn't working on the Pi. I keep getting these errors. So I found this one, this one works, so we're gonna use that one. And just a side note, that's one little complaint I've had is that things on the VM don't always work on the Pi. But anyways, this is the one we're gonna use. And to simplify the workflow, what I'm gonna do is clone the repo and compile the graph on the VM. And then I'm gonna take that whole folder and move it onto the Pi and run it there, as opposed to building the graph on the Pi itself mainly because I've noticed errors when trying to compile using the Pi. So right now I'm on the virtual machine desktop and first thing I'm gonna do is clone the GitHub address. Then we'll pull up a new terminal and we'll call git clone and paste in that address. So now that that's done, we need to download the weights file. So you'll see that there's a link to the weights just go ahead, download them, and then once we're done with that, we'll move into the directory, the repo directory. We'll create a new folder called weights. 
And in there we'll put our weights that we downloaded. So the one that it is, is this cafe, YOLO tiny cafe model. So just copy, paste that in. Once that's done, we're ready to compile and generate the graph. So let's jump back over here. Let's move into the directory. And now just come down here to the um, compile command. So mvnc compile this proto txt file with this weights file that we downloaded. So I'll come back over, paste this, and we need to make one quick change. You'll notice that the weights that we downloaded are called yolo underscore tiny. So we just delete this underscore deploy. So we'll go ahead and run that. We should get a graph generated. And yep, there it is right there. So now what I'm gonna do is test this just to make sure it's working. So I'm gonna jump back over to the repo and if we scroll down, you'll see there's a command to run a webcam application. So the command is gonna be Python 3 and we'll move into this folder py examples and then there's a file called objectdetectionapp.py. So I'm just gonna copy that. And one note, make sure that you have your webcam selected and you've got your Movidius plugged in and it's checked here in the USB devices. So I'll jump back over to the terminal and we can just paste that command in and run it and we should get a feed from our webcam. And there it is. So you can see we're running YOLO, we're detecting a bottle and the dining table or what it thinks is a dining table. The other stuff, it's not sure what it is, but that's okay, it's working. And what you see here in the terminal is the frame time, how long it's taking per frame and seconds. So it's about a quarter of a second, which means we're running at about four frames per second. And that's about the same that we were seeing with the other GitHub repo for YOLO. So that's sort of our baseline. We're getting four frames per second with the Movidius on our VM. So now what I'm gonna do is take this whole folder and move it onto the Raspberry Pi so that way we can run it. And we don't need to compile the graph. We've got everything there. So we should be able to just move it and run it. Now to transfer files from the VM to the Pi, we could use a storage device like a USB stick, but instead I'm gonna use FTP. And the most common FTP software is this thing called FileZilla. And what FTP is, just a way of transferring files between devices. So um, real quick, how to connect to the Pi, you would go and select new site, and then you would enter the IP address of the Pi, put port 22, select SFTP, and then put your Pi username and login password. So username here, password here, then you'll click connect. So on this side is your like host file structure, so our VM stuff here, and then this is the Pi. So what I'm gonna do is just come down to the desktop and I'm just gonna put our YOLO directory that we built right on the desktop. So if I come here, um, I had it just right in here. So it was this thing, YOLO NCS. So you can just click, drag, and move it. And here you can see the status. It'll take a, maybe 30 seconds or so to copy it. Cool, now that that's done, let's jump over to the Pi desktop. All right, here we are on the Pi desktop, and I've gone ahead and plugged in the Movidius compute stick into the Pi and the webcam. So now you can see we've got the folder right here. So all I'm gonna do is open up a terminal and we should be able to run the same command. So it was Python 3 and then it was Pi objects, or excuse me, we need to CD into the directory. Then it's Python 3, then Pi examples and the file was called object detection app. So we'll run this, hopefully we get a window Boom, there it is. So let's see, let's see how fast we're processing. So on the Pi, we're only getting about 0.7, yeah, about 0.7. So that's a little bit faster than 1.5 frames per second. Quite a bit slower than the VM. My guess is the reason why it's slower is because we're not using USB 3. We're communicating through the Pi with USB 2, which is a slower protocol. So that could be a big chunk of why it's slower. Obviously the CPU on the Pi is pretty poor compared to the VM, but that's okay. We're running and we're getting at least one and a half frames per second. And that's not too bad. So we're detecting the same thing, the bottle 
and the dining table. Um, yeah, so this is like our baseline. And just quickly to point out, I got, I got, I got this extension cable because this, um, the Movidius is so bulky. Um, it kind of blocks certain ports. So this way I can plug all, I can fill all my USB devices with it. And I'm using my normal webcam hooked up through USB. Um, I got a Pi cam, but I haven't installed that yet. So I'm still just using the webcam that might speed things up a little bit using a dedicated port for the Pi cam instead of USB, but we'll see. So anyways, yeah, this is our baseline. It's up and running and it's working. So that's going to be it for this YOLO example here. But before we go, I just want to briefly talk about what the next few videos are going to be. So for the next few videos, I want to do one showing how the API works, how we connect to the NCS, how we load a graph, how we do inferences. I want to go through some example code, just showing how that works. And also I bought another board that I want to try to see if it will perform better than the Raspberry Pi. So this is the Rock 64. What's nice about it, it's got more RAM, four gigabytes instead of one gigabyte. It's got um, eMMC e memory. So this is a faster, better memory or storage device. And the CPU is a little bit faster. And the main thing I think is that it's got USB 3. So that, that communication rate between the NCS and the, the board should be faster through USB 3. So I'm hoping we get the same speed as we do with our VM, but that's for a later video. We're gonna test it out, see how well it performs. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys liked it, leave a like. If you really liked it, hit subscribe button and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.